just obviously in review from from last week, what you've, I'm sure you've watched it many many times. What what pleased you most about that? Uh, I thought it was good all round performance. Um, as I said, post game, there was a few moments that let us down uh, in that first half, um, but but I thought a lot of our defence was good in that first half, and certainly a lot of our attack was creating some some problems um, for the opposition and. Uh, the second half was, you know, kind of more of the same. Um, we had good energy level and and were able to maintain that through the the back end of the second half. And you know, I thought we were the, you know, it was a good hard first half, and then I thought we were the better team in the second half. And you know, fortunately, we could get that result. I'm sure you you've always known you've had that you have that within you the resilience to to come back. But how encouraging was it to to see it in action? Yeah, it was, it was certainly pleasing to see that resilience to the scoreboard and then the 12 men and, and being able to play well, play a good style that's entertaining as well as um, effective is what we're what we're after. Um, yeah, it was, it was it was pleasing and that's that's the battle of competitive sport is to you know find that resilience as often as you can for as long as you you need to to get a result and that that's that's the the ongoing challenge and it'll be on again on Friday. Talking of which, we've seen the 21 and Big Mick is in there. What are his chances right now of playing on Friday? Yeah, Mick will be playing on Friday. Yep. How much of a boost is that for you all? Yeah, it's great. Uh, Mick is um, a lovable lovable character um, amongst the group as well as a as a great player and a um, a good teammate. So everyone's excited to, to have Mick back and, you know, probably no more excited than him. Uh, <laughs> To, to be back he's he's had a a lengthy shift uh, in rehab and done a tremendous job on the on the back of uh you know an extended period at the back end of last uh last season you know playing in real pain in the big games at the back end um and then you know being in pain to to try and do what he could for his country and for the world cup um campaign of england and uh, and then that obviously led to surgery. So it's been a it's been a long haul for him, but he um he he's ready and he's excited. Given we're at the quarter point of the season, do you see it as a as a timely boost? It's just great to have your good players um, you know, available or all players being available because um yeah, our squad's getting healthier. Oh, which is great. It drives competition and it, you know, we're gonna need a squad to to have a successful season. So um yeah, it's it's pleasing to to have Mick back, and um, yeah, we, we're certainly getting healthier. Given the way the middles went at the weekend, has it left you with a bit of a headache of you know how are you bringing back in? Yeah, yeah, really difficult. Um, we've had you know players that have played well early in the season, you know, have missed out on selection some weeks, um, which is a difficult thing for a coach. You, um, you know. And, I certainly don't take any decisions lightly and it, it takes up, it consumes a lot of your time trying to do what's right for the team um, for this week. And also you've got to have a vision to the, to the, the games ahead and the future as well. So um, it's a difficult situation, but a, a good one for the club um, where, you know, genuine every week Super League players sometimes, you know, won't, won't get a start. So um, it's a good, yeah, it's a good position to be in. Just talking on on middles, could you just give us an insight into um, Sam Lasoni's progress as far as you're concerned? Yeah, I think he started to started to find his feet. Um, had a real impact last week. Um, in you know difficult situation in in the game when when he entered, um, but I think he's starting to find his feet and get a bit of rhythm in the English game and um, starting to feel settled in the in the new surround. So um, he's got a long way to go. Um, but I, you know he's got plenty in there too. Another week without Morgan Gannon is that becoming a, a concern for you all? No, quite quite the opposite actually. He's um, you know we've put a, a really comprehensive plan together to um, work on all aspects that may you know reduce the risk in the future um, of of another concussion. So he's he's doing a lot of. Tr- quality training um, we're seeking experts outside of our sport um, to support that as well so um, it's you know I think it's an exciting time really for for Morgan to to work on some things and 
um, prepare himself for his next opportunity to play, which will, um, you know, won't be won't be for an, another few weeks at least. Yeah, I was going to say, is that is that plan to sort of keep him out of the firing line for you know the foreseeable future? He's got a couple more weeks of, of training, and we want to see some some physical gains and growth there, um, as well as some other stuff around coordination and and skill execution and and making some changes to to tackle tech. Um, so that stuff takes some time. So he's um, he's fully engaged in that process, and um, it's been great to see his progress in the last couple of weeks um, with with some stuff that we've been throwing at him. So it's not so much the symptoms of the the injury which you've said he hasn't had of late it's the symptoms of the ways to come to the injury in, in a way that yeah, he hasn't at. had he hasn't had any physical symptoms um after this most recent concussion um the the specialist has taken a you know a, a rightly so conservative approach to to returning to play and then we've um had that clearance to return to to contact and to get get going again um but we're we're putting a you know, a conservative, well-constructed um, plan to to bring about some technical improvements and some physical gains as well to to give him best chance. Um, and he's he's such a young man that there's there's no rush. But of course, everyone wants to be playing footy too, so there's a balance there. It was good to see. Just just on Harry Newman, there's obviously these quotes today from Sean Wayne's press conference about Harry's discipline, and I'm sure these these are the same things that you're reinforcing to him as well. I'm unaware of those comments um, from, from Sean. Um, I can only speak about um, what I've seen and, and my own stance on the thing um, that it, you know, he, he needs to manage his emotions as I, as I stated after the game um, the other day. Um, but also there's a very fine line with, you know, fierce competitors in our sport, you know, they're right on the right on the borderline in in different different areas, different aspects. Um, the best players in in lots of sports, you know, they walk the tightrope of, of pushing the pushing the boundaries in certain things. So Harry's aware of some things he needs to work on there, um, but we don't want him to lose his competitive nature. But he just needs to direct that in the right in the right areas. What about Hawkins from Rovers? Then what do you expect from them over there on Friday? Oh, a, you know, a battle, a battle. They um, they played particularly well against us in a, in their last friendly. Um, they'll they'll well and truly up for that, and and they outplayed us that day. So they'll have some belief in playing against us. Um, and they've they've had some good good tussles uh, to start the season. They've played some good stuff. They've been disrupted a little bit with with injury and whatnot, as, as we have. Um, but they'll, you know, they'll fancy their chances, and and we're, you know, we're desperate to to play well on a regular basis now and and get some rhythm. Corey Hall's likely to play for them. Um, obviously, one of your former players. There's quite a bit of swap business and being done around the league at the moment. Are, are there quite a few clubs knocking on your door? Uh, there was a as I read. Um, you know the the Wakefield request to Hooli um, is the only one I'm I'm aware of, um, but all of those things are done behind closed doors in in our club. So if there's something to announce, we we would announce that. Have you, is there anyone that you think might benefit from some game time somewhere else? No, between Bradford and uh, reserves and academy. Um, that they they serve us well as our primary um, source. We, we've um, had Joe Gibbons go out to to play at, at Keithley, which is that's probably the right thing for for his point of his career to to find a find a spot there to to get some game time in Championship. Um, we'll treat it a case by case situation, but um, most of our players, yeah, our top top players have have had good amount of game time to start the year. Or they're just returning to to plan now, so um, I don't see the need to to go out on loan at this point. Um, I saw Luke Cooley doing a bit of work on the field after the game on Saturday. How how close is he? Do you think to a to a first Super League appearance? Um, I guess everyone's close, but he's um, you know he, he's he's behind Richie at this point in time, and. Um, don't see a need to to carry two fullbacks in a 17-man squad. So um, 
he's he's doing well, but he's still sort of getting the miles in his legs after um, after that long break. Is he one that could potentially get a game at Bradford just to, as you say, get some get some game time through his legs? Oh, it's, it's Challenge Cup weekend this weekend, so we won't cup tie anyone by by sending them to Bradford. But um, yeah, in the future we'll we'll assess where things are at. Um, Luke will play in reserves this weekend, so that'll be a good opportunity for him. Uh, Reese Martin was I, th- I thought he played really well at centre last week. He's obviously capable of playing centre or back row. Is it is it a week by week thing where Reese would play, or do you see a particular position where he's really strong? Um, I, I pro- personally, my own personal thoughts, I, I think he's probably equally a, a centre or a back rower. He, I think he feels he's probably more more a back rower, but he he enjoys playing centre, and there's no no issues there. He grew up being a centre. Um, he played multiple different positions in the old under twenties competition in Australia, and then it wasn't until he um, became, you know, he went played in Queensland Cup and then the Bulldogs. It, it wasn't then that he you know really established himself as an edge back rower. So. Um, yeah, I, I love the versatility and um, his attributes can can shine in either position. He had a, a, by his high standards, he had a few issues with the kicking tee last weekend. Has Aidan Caesar been in him this week at training, trying to take it off him or will he carry on as normal? Oh, he'll carry on as normal. I, th- I thought it was, um, you know, a really good sign of uh, good teammates and sort of selfless nature um, yeah, Caesar's. I, I think he's towards an eighty-five percent career goal kicker, um, which is you know right at the top end. Um, but he he kept telling Reese to to go for it, and then after I think you know eventually he said, "Do you want me to have a hit there?" And I, I think Reese said, "Yeah, go on then." And um, then then the next kick was in front, and Reese said, "Well, you got the last one. You should have this one." And and Aiden wouldn't have it. He said, "No, you're our goal kicker. You kick it." So I thought that was a uh, that was a, a pleasing moment for a, for a coach to see that. Um, Reese is our goal kicker, but it's also great to have Caesar there um, when and if needed. He, he's I think he's two from two as needed this year. So, uh, just finally, I'm sure you're sick of being asking asked about it. Is there any update on Cruz? Has that release been finalised yet? As far as you're aware, um, he's the the paperwork at our end's been done, but I'm not aware where he's going to. Right. So, in, in terms of Leeds, he's no longer a Leeds Rhinos player. To my knowledge, that is correct. Just ask you about um, Ash Handley, how he's uh, getting on. I think you said four to six weeks and it's been three now. Is he um, back in any sort of training at the moment? He, he's back in some yeah rehab style uh, style running and he's he's progressing nicely. Um, yeah, I'd hope the game against Lee before the break um, would be, be his return then, but... We'll, you know, we'll see how things trend. You're in a good position. I think you've only got three players unavailable from the entire squad, which is a bit of a change to to how things were last year. Um, obviously, that must that must be pleasing for you at this stage of the season, quarter of the way through. Yeah, we spoke about in the preseason that we'll need a squad to to have a successful season, and we we were only just getting started. I, I feel, but um. It's it's good to have competition and it's good to to be able to pick um, you know pick pick the team rather than the team picks itself. Um, so it's uh, yeah it's a good position and the, there's some more young kids as well. They're they're really growing in the background as well. So we'll we'll see how you know if the squad can get even deeper as the season goes. It must make for some dif- difficult decisions though with the likes of Mick and James Bentley back in contention this week after a performance like last week. It's very difficult. Um, there's been multiple difficult decisions. Um, you know, started this year already. There's been guys that have played well and and they haven't made it the week after. So that's the that's the challenge, and that's what you sign up for as a coach. But uh, um, it also shows the the strength of the the squad. Just one for me. Could we see James Bentley do more minutes at hooker against Hokia? Is that a consideration of yours? It definitely is a consideration. Yep, it could. Be. Yep. It must be a difficult decision because obviously I thought Corey Johnson, well, you said as well yourself that you thought Corey Johnson did very well against Catalan. Is that sort of a 50-50 call for you? Um, Corey, Corey's right there. Um, he He's going to he's gonna push Jared and, you know, I've, I've sung Jared's praises a lot, but, um, you know, I feel Corey, Corey's going to really emerge in the next, um, you know, the coming weeks and months as well. So, you know, I feel we're, we're well positioned there between those two guys. Um, and you know Bentley can 
can plug a gap there as as needed as well. I think he grew up being a, you know, or not grew up, but he was he was on the verge of being a a back rower sort of hooker as a 17, 18 year old. So um, yeah, we'll we'll see how it looks each week. I'm sure you may have noticed last week you were linked with a move for Luke Brooks for 2024. Um, do you have any anything to say on that at all? I'm unaware of any interaction with Luke Brooks or his management. Um, both of your halfbacks are out of contract to the end of the year. Is that something that you might be looking towards in the next few months? Certainly, we'll have to, you know, um, progress our roster building for for twenty twenty four, and and that's a daily um, process 